Chris Hogan here. I've spent so much time on the road and talked with a lot of people. And the millionaire success stories that I run into might surprise you. You're going to get a glimpse into the life of a self-made millionaire. These folks are hard at work. You don't want to miss it, people. This is Millionaire. Well, I'm Jim Powell. I live outside of Cincinnati in an area called Anderson Township. I am 73. Okay. Yes. I spent 20 years in the Air Force, uh, most of that time flying B-52s. I then went to Com Air and I was able to get a job with them and I flew with them for 14 years. Then I flew a corporate jet for another three years. So I spent most of the time flying airplanes and all. That's what I've done for the last 37 years plus another 10 when I haven't done anything. I've been retired. Uh, you know, you hear about the guys who fly the big airplanes and they make 200000 a year and they say, oh, that was never my case. When I flew for Calm Air, I think the most I ever made toward the end of my career, I actually made about 90000 a year. But the rest of the time, I was making about 40000 45000 that sort of thing, plus my military retirement. So I think the attitude that I went at in terms of saving had more to do with it than anything else. I was just lucky that I got a chance to do what I wanted to do, which is fly airplanes. I found some time not too long ago to put a book together. I decided to call it Of Dreams and Coveralls. In that book, what I primarily talk about is picking yourself up when you fall down. There's a chapter in there that talks about going from a point where I'm owing several different people money to a point where I finally owe no one and have money set aside. What happened, I had somebody who called me, and when he called me, he talked very harshly because I owed him money, which really angered me. Okay? But the more I thought of it, the more I realized I was at fault because I put myself in that particular position and all. Okay? What happened was I said, okay, this is never going to happen again. I'm never going to be in a position where I owe another man a dollar bill. I'm just not going to do that, no. So I started trying to pay off my bills. I paid off the first bill, which was about $75 and all. I'm only making about $180 a month at the time, so that was quite a bit. But when I got that bill paid off, I took the money from that and I added that to the next bill, and then the next, and the next, and the next. So I got them all paid off. Okay? When Ruth and I got married, she had about $2,500 in bills. So they became our bills. It weren't just her bills, they were our bills. So I said, we buy nothing until we get the bills paid off that you have. Because if you're trying to save money, the best way to save money is when you don't owe anybody. We worked on it, we paid off one, and then the next, and the next, and the next. We were debt free within two and a half years after getting married, and we've been that way all of our lives, okay? We went into, the, I went into the office, I should say, and at that time I started saving $100 a month. I made $500, I saved $100. When I got promoted from second lieutenant to first lieutenant, I saved another $100. I had started saving about $1,100 a month by the time I left the military, and I continued doing that. I had bought a couple of little houses, and every time I got extra money from those, I put that money into mutuals. And then I started putting money away for the kids' education. We found ourselves saving and investing and continuing to do it over a period of time and just kind of forgetting about it, just letting it take care of itself. By the time they got ready to go to college, they had somewhere between fifty dollars and $60,000 for each one of them so that they wouldn't have to worry about it and I wouldn't have to worry about it. I had another account for my wife and me and there's about $150,000 in also. We met with my financial planner and he says to me, you guys have done very well for what you make. I wasn't making a whole lot at the time. I had a military retirement, which is about $30,000 retirement at that time. I was working for Comair, and I think I was making about $45,000 with them. My wife was, was a teacher, making about $50,000. He says, I have a client that makes over a million dollars a year. He makes a million and about $30,000 or $40,000 a year, something like that. And you two guys are better off than he is. You take sack lunches to work. You drive cars at three, four, five, six years of age and all that sort of thing. You save periodically. You stay out of debt. One day, we met with him. He said, let me show you something. And he did some figures and all. He said, here's your net worth. And it was in excess of a million dollars. And I didn't even know it at the time. I was just trying to make sure that we were going to be okay just in case, financially. 
I know of several individuals who are black, who are millionaires, and they don't make a lot of money, didn't make a lot of money. I know of an individual where her husband never saved anything, but she saved about $10,000 a year. And she did secretarial work, so she didn't make a lot of money, okay? And at about 80, 84, 85 years of age, worth a couple of million dollars. Just from doing that alone, one individual has worked two or three jobs, he's reached millionaire status. I can think of, right offhand, about seven or eight people who have to be African American who are millionaires, okay? It's available to everybody, black or white. I think sometimes, though, if you don't recognize what's possible, then you may perceive that that's a problem when it really isn't, my opinion. I think it's the habit that you employ that makes all the difference in the world whether or not you get to be a millionaire or not. I think the first thing I would tell someone who wants to do that is to pay yourself first. The second thing I would say is get out of debt and stay out of debt. And if you're married, I think it's important that you're both on the same sheet. If you're not on the same sheet of music, you got a situation where one mule is pulling one direction, the other mule is pulling another direction, the wagon doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Whether you're trying to get to $500,000 or you're trying to get to $750,000 or a million, whatever it happens to be, if you're trying to reach this goal financially and you're concentrating on all the obstacles in between and what have you, then you're wasting the energy on them that you could be using to get to that goal. And that's what you need to do. That's where your focus needs to be. Okay? If you're doing the right things, not only will you get there, but you will get beyond that point because of something called compounding interest. Einstein was asked sometime before he passed away, what's the most powerful force in the universe? And he didn't talk about gravity or anything like that. He immediately responded, compound interest. And it works for everybody. You don't have to make a whole lot of money. You need to consistently save, number one. And then in addition to that, you need to get out of debt and stay out of debt. And it doesn't matter if you're black or white or green or purple or chartreuse, okay? You need to do those things.